big story uh, for today, and that's Hyundai. Hyundai IPO is going to hit the markets next week. They're looking to raise nearly 28,000 crores. It is expected that at their upper, uh, upper band of the, the price range the, the, uh, for the IPO, uh, well, it, it could be valued at around 1.6 lakh crore rupees. Uh, and while you know it's it's a number two player, there is a little bit of distance from number one, at least in terms of revenue. I'm talking about absolute revenues here. Uh, it is uh, fully an OFS. There is no fresh issue here. But I'm going to stop right there and well bring in my colleague Puneet to tell us firstly about the kind of growth that we've seen for Hyundai in the past and how does it match up. Uh, Puneet, uh, thanks for joining in. So. Why don't you shed light on firstly how things have fared for Hyundai over the past few years? Yeah, definitely. You know, from uh, FI21 levels, if you look at the sales have gone up meaningfully yeah. from just about 5.7 lakh sales that they did in that year. And in the last year, they reported roughly about 7.7 .7 lakh yeah. units as well. That's one of the biggest gains over the last three to four years, despite, you know, being very big on competition from the likes of Mahindra as well as Tata Motors. So uh, that's been one of the key things to watch out for with this RHP that they filed yesterday. We also see the Q1 numbers of the company as well. It's reported a 5% growth at a time frame where someone like a Maruti has reported just a 1% growth, while Tata Motors has actually reported a decline in sales. So that's been one of the key things to watch out for because a big growth for your Hyundai. Now, and also I want to just highlight the export picture as well because for Hyundai, the export numbers have been, you know, really strong. Uh, for FI24 specifically, it was about 1.6 lakh units that they sold out of the total 7.7 .7 lakh units. And that's roughly 23 to 24 percent of the volumes that they manufacture in India is actually exported to markets such as Southeast and Southeast Asia. And it's the highest market share that they have amongst all players that operate in India. So that's definitely one of the big things. Maruti is a close second to expose. Roughly 10% of the volumes is what they export out of the country. But this has been one of the biggest things and that's reflected in their margins as well. So export is a higher margin business. And when you look at the financials of the company as well, roughly about 69,000 crores of revenue reported in FI24. That's a big jump from the 60,000 in the previous year as well. And margins are also up by 60 basis points in the same time frame, coming at 13.1%. Uh, profits grown by roughly about 28 odd percent compared to the last year. And that's also one of the biggest strengths. And in Q1 as well, if you just notice the margin number, 13.5%, much higher than what someone like a Maruti reported as well. So that's one of the key winners here. I feel the margin picture it's been maintaining while also growing volume steadily at a growth pace. Right, but you know, uh, it's closest competitor to Maruti. Uh, let's talk about Maruti Suzuki specifically in this case and how things could potentially pan out and what the comparison look like when it comes to Hyundai India at the moment. Yeah, definitely. So I think because as you rightly said that it's a big jump between number one and number two player yeah. in terms of revenue as you rightly highlighted as well as the volume picture. Hmm. So if you look at, you know, the volumes for Maruti is roughly three times of that what Hyundai does roughly. 21 lakh is what they sold in the last year. That's for Maruti Suzuki. Hyundai sold roughly about 7.7 .7 lakh units, but when you also look at the revenues, Maruti is double that of what Hyundai did. So uh, it's key to look at these two metrics because uh, while you know volumes are a, one, more than three times, but revenue is only like double of what they did compared to Hyundai. And when you look at the margins as well, that's you know where the key differences that we wanted to talk about. 13.1% for Hyundai, like we spoke about previously as well. It's a big jump from what Maruti did at uh, roughly about 11.6%. So uh, it's key here to watch out for that, you know, Hyundai has higher EBITDA margins. But when you look at the PAT margins, it's a different picture altogether. Maruti is high, higher PAT margins. 9.8% is what they reported in FI24. And, you know, that's higher than what Hyundai reported on CAPEX as well as royalty as well. Both those metrics are quite similar for both the players. They do about 27 to 3% of royalty to their peer, uh, global payer as well. Uh, and, you know, uh, just before we go on, move on to the next segment, the reason that Maruti's profitability is higher is also wanted to impact three key metrics that they track. Depreciation is one of the first ones. Now, Hyundai has a higher depreciation uh, compared to, you know, something like a Maruti, almost double, roughly about 32% compared to, you know, depreciation they do on their gross PP or the assets or the capacity that they build up over the last few years. When you look at, you know, the other income component as well on the next graph, uh, that's also one of the key things. Maruti has higher other income because it's a very cash-heavy generating company. And a lot of that is investing into treasuries as well. So they get a higher share of other income as well. And the, finally, the tax component as well. When you compare it for Maruti, it's roughly about 22.5%. And that's quite lower than what Hyundai reported. So these three metrics also very positively impact Maruti on the PAT basis, profitability basis. 
but on margins, Hyundai does get a big thumbs up. Uh, no, but, uh, and yet, you know, I was also looking at the price to earnings uh, multiples that you had put up here, yeah. uh, Puneet. Uh, they're more or less head-to-head. Uh, -head. Yeah. So, uh, what's going on behind here? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, just going on, and when you look at a couple of metrics, the net worth and the dividend as well, because that drives the equity part of the valuation which will go in. The net worth has dropped by almost like half compared to FY23, and that's because they had a big, uh, you know, dividend component, as you can see, because the dividend has increased from 1,400 crores to 15,000 crores in just, you know, the last time. And that's the one difference that has happened between the DRHP filing they did in the month of June to the RHV filing that they've done now yesterday specifically. So they had a big dividend payout in, you know, in the Jan to March month. And the difference is because in the DRHV, this dividend component wasn't visible because it's a nine month number that they reported for FY24. So this has come as a bit, bit of a shocker because this number wasn't out there in the public market. So big dividend payout to the global parent Hyundai. And that's led to the net worth dropping to 12,000 crores. And as you rightly said, you know, there's not much difference on the price to earning basis. And that's because of this aspect as well. So uh, the ROE has dropped roughly about 12.3% for Hyundai. It was about 22% in the first nine months. And that's dropped because of the big dividend payout. Yeah. Uh, but uh, price to earnings, the last metric on your screen, roughly same about 26 uh, times for both the players. Uh, I've also highlighted a couple of more metrics which are in favor of Hyundai. Now, market cap to profitability, when you look at EV to EBITDA as well, one of the key things that we watch out for, we, we both are very less uh, debt-heavy companies, really less debt for both these companies, while cash also is one of the key things to watch out for. So, uh, market cap to revenue as well as market cap to profitability is in favor for Hyundai, but on a price to earnings basis, uh, it is quite similar for both these players, and that's also because Hyundai generates lesser profitability. So, overall, I think it's a big thumbs up for Hyundai on the basis of sales, on the basis of margins that we did speak about as well. And when you look at the uh, valuation, what multiple it is coming at, it's not very, you know, out of whack. It's pricing in uh, what it is very good at, which is the SU higher SUV sales that it does uh, with Creta as well as the other compact SUV market that, you know, they also spoke to us about in the channel as well. But overall, it's quite a, quite a positive IPO to come into the market as well. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, you know, a point taken as well, Puneet. Uh, we mustn't really compare this to its peers. Perhaps you can just take a look uh, on a standalone basis and you will realize that there are more pros than cons, and especially <laughs> given the kind of plans that the company has spoken about with respect to uh, the, the EV space. And we have some very attractive-looking cars as well from uh, the Hyundai India stable. But, Puneet, thanks so much for joining us.